What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Chili here and today I've got an exciting video for you guys. We are going to be taking a look at every single men at arms unit in the game and we're going to be judging their aesthetics from the best to the worst. Let's go ahead and take a look at the categories here. On the very bottom is get it off my screen. I don't want to see it no more and hopefully it gets reworked someday. Up above that is mid as hell. I will accept it. It's not a pretty unit, but whatever. And then following that is double take. If I take a look at this unit, I will be guaranteed to come back and look at it again because it is not that bad of a looker. Up next is one of the beautiful people. I think that one is pretty self-explanatory. And the last one is a woo. I wanna die and want some if I put it here, this means I really like it. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our first unit here is the Delhi Sultanate Man at Arms. Now, the Delhi Sultanate is not a faction that you would historically associate with heavy infantry, but they managed to get a some really cool looking uniforms here. Uh, I really like this fur trim on the vest here for the Castle Age Men at Arms, and then the in the Imperial Age the golden uh, uh, what is this the chainmail coif that they have here, as well as this like golden feather that they have shooting up the shield. It honestly, it looks pretty damn good. This is a good looking unit. This helmet is also very unique. You know, I didn't think that they would have that many heavy armor designs for Muslim units, because considering that they all kind of look samey, at least to most of the Western imagination. Uh, but this is actually a pretty well designed unit. I'm, I'm going to rank this up pretty high. This is definitely one of the beautiful people. Delhi Sultan and Men at Arms looking good. Also, I love making these guys and just making them sprint and they make that ah sound. Uh, it's a little bit... It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That's a pretty good looking unit right there. All right, up next, we're going to be taking a look at the Ghulam. Now, this is not exactly a men-at-arms. It's a men-at-arms equivalent, but the Ghulam technically is a unique unit that replaces the men-at-arms, and it's available to the Abbasids as well as the Ayyubids, which were a new faction, the Abbasid variant added in the Sultan's Ascend. Uh, now, for the Ghulams, you know, Okay, I, I've got a lot of thoughts on the Ghulams. One, the scale armor here, it could look really tacky, but it actually does not look bad. Two, the Imperial Age version of the Ghulam actually looks pretty badass with half of his half of his face covered up. This armor with this with these uh, arm pads like this, like this is not armor that. Mm, how do I say this? It's not armor that I popularly associate with. Uh, the Middle East because in general in the Middle East you're not really wearing those heavy armors um, the same way that you would see like the plate armors from Europe for instance but this is actually pretty damn passable um it's not quite as good looking you know if I put it side by side next to the Delhi Sultanate I'm not sure it's quite as good looking as the Delhi Sultanate man at arms so I'm gonna put this in the double take category for now we'll see where I decide to move it afterwards also a very useful unit. I love building these guys. They're so fucking strong. All right, next up, let's take a look at the Byzantines. Uh, now, the Byzantines also have a unique unit replacing the men-at-arms. It's called the Varangian Guard. And I was a little bit surprised originally. I thought they would have a unit called like the Scutatoi, like the shield bearers, uh, whereas the Varangian Guards seem like a little bit more unique. These were the mercenaries coming in from the Nordic countries, uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, even England uh, at a time, and uh, or also the Rus. They would come down and serve as mercenaries and uh, bodyguards for the Emperor um, and they definitely have that Nordic look they have these large looking Scandinavian shields uh, they have this kind of uh, you, we can clearly see these like uh, what are they what are they called again like the like the Nordic helmet with the uh, with the nose guard and the eyepiece um, looks pretty good here uh, I gotta say though in the Imperial Age this little cape that they're wearing looks kind of tacky if I'm being honest with you it's it's not a bad looking unit by any means but I think I think the Imperial Age look just isn't quite cutting it for me so I'm gonna put it I'll put it in the double take area it's a little bit lower than the Abbasid Ghulam um, but we'll leave it there for now uh, next up we're gonna look at the English now the English men at arms is one of their most spammable units. It's uh, very cheap relative to the English economy because the English economy makes a lot of food and it also produces gold in the Imperial Age. And the English men at arms doesn't cost that much and they get that armor cladding ability which just makes them chat at arms that don't fucking die. And I gotta say, it's it's an interesting unit. You know, the fact that the English get the men at arms even in the Dark Age, in the Dark Age they kind of look like 
I don't know what you call this, kind of like a Saxon looking design. And then later on they get some scale armor and then eventually they get that plate armor. And then in the Imperial Age, you know, I'm a little bit surprised to see that, that there's actually like a Christian looking cross design on the Tabard here. I, I thought the game tried to stay away from like blatant uh, religious imagery like this, but hey, you know, maybe we can get some like Crusader Knights with the uh, Great Helms. Uh, with the with the crosses on them as well that'd be kind of sick uh i gotta say though i am not a fan of how basic this unit looks especially considering that the english spam these guys so fucking hard and they all look so damn lame <laughs> it's pretty it's i don't know i'm not i'm not a fan of this unit design uh also this um uh the salet that this what's it called a salet a salad uh this kind of helmet design just I think they could have gone in a different direction with the English men at arms because we, we see salads with some of the or salets with uh, some of the other factions as well. So it just seems a little bit overused. I don't like the way this unit looks. I want it off my screen. It's actually not even mid. I, I'm hoping that this unit can uh, can mix it up a little bit and be a little bit sexier considering how often I see this goddamn unit. All right. Now we're looking at the French men at arms. Ooh, okay. I'm not sure how many of you guys even know what the French men at arms looks like because no one builds this. If they're, if you see a French player and they're spamming men at arms, that is a man of culture right there. Like, why would you ever build this? If you, if you're making these units, you are building them purely because they just look so damn good. They got this, uh, this, this full plate armor, this shiny silver metal, uh, and then the Imperial Age, they got this golden helmet. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of this uh, this helmet. It's, I think it's called a Bergenet, right? Bergenet. Uh, and then the feather coming out of it looks pretty good. Uh, the Imperial Age, you know, it looks a little bit tacky here relative to the Castle Age. The Castle Age is where it really shines, I think. That, like, full metal silver looks looks really nice. And the Imperial Age, this little, like, uh, cloth hood that it, they get is a little bit tacky. But when you see it in-game, it doesn't look that bad at all. And then this nice big shoulder pad, it looks a little bit tacky when you zoom, zoom up on it, but when you see it when you're seeing it in game it doesn't look bad at all so i'm gonna go ahead and give this the awuga treatment this is one of my favorite uh designs for men at arms for sure for sure we're gonna make it just a little bit bigger right there all right now let's take a look at the Chinese Palace Guards. Now the Palace Guards are also a unique unit. They replaced the Men-at-Arms for the Chinese as well as the Jushi's Legacy variant version of the Chinese. Uh, they are very similar to the Men-at-Arms except that they are faster moving with a little bit less armor. Um, and you can see here in the Castle Age, this guy looks like he runs a lot. You know, he's got a little scarf going on. He's got these shoes that have the pointed tips at the end. Uh, I love that they're carrying the Guandaos. Those are badass looking uh, very very unique weapon to china um and yeah it's a really nice distinct look also the uh the the armor on the arms they have got this like kind of a lobster tail like uh armor design here very very uh i would say what this is like ming dynasty looking uh armor this this uh this imperial age palace guard you know it's got this like robe thing going on which is a little bit interesting i'm not sure i like it it adds a little bit too much color to this uniform I, I do like this armor design this looks almost like a Qing dynasty brigandine uh but this like big cloth thing is kind of covering up a lot of the design oh i do love this tassel here this tassel at the end of the weapon and this this like this guan looks like something that guan yu would straight up use like that that that's pretty sick and the helmet design is also pretty sick as well um so mm, overall i like it I like it. It's not the prettiest. I'm going to put it in double take. I'm going to put it in double take. It, it could be a little bit better, but overall, pretty good looking unit. All right, let's move on to... Uh, actually, we'll look at... We'll look at... Look at the samurai first. We'll look at the samurai first. Uh, now, the samurai... This is a hotly awaited unit. It was added with the Sultan's Ascend. A lot of people were waiting for the Japanese to come in the game. A lot of people were waiting for the Samurai. Now that we finally got the Samurai, I'm not sure that we were quite expecting this. Now, I will say this, they get, the, the developers get some props for the history of it because I love that the Samurai don't just use Katanas. Uh, they actually wield Naginatas as, as a default, and then they can be upgraded to wield the Nodachi, which is a bigger two-handed sword version of the katana um now that's all really cool but uh 
And, oh, and another thing I really appreciate is that the helmet design is not just your stereotypical Sengoku Jidai era helmet, but rather there's like various kinds of helmet designs reflecting all the way back to, this is like the Imperial Age, like way back uh, under the, uh, what was it called? Uh, Heian period, uh, where, where there was just like, uh, the emperor was ruling and, you know, the designs were just a lot less martial and advanced and then as you go through the different ages you can see the crests forming up on the top of the helmet you can see this uh helmet pattern with the furls coming off at the ends uh being more and more intricate the armor and the shoulder padding becoming more and more advanced as uh, armor was designed to uh, basically negate arrow fire um all of that's really cool but like in game this just looks like a boxy mess like even right here you can see this is just you can't really tell what's happening it's just kind of boxy and ugly looking so honestly the samurai their animations are badass as hell and i like the history points here but it doesn't look all that good as a unit like outside of the dark age like the the, the latter three ages just look really mid so i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the mid as hell category this is our first mid men in arms um we actually got a surprise contender here, okay? We got Jeanne d'Arc as a woman at arms, and this reveals a new... Actually, I need to reveal this. Uh, we have a secret category here uh, that I'm going to reveal now. It's called Woman at Arms. Ding, ding, ding. All right, this is where Jeanne d'Arc belongs. We got a woman at arms. Um... I'm not even gonna say it. This this uh, this whole unit just is kind of ridiculous. Jean Dark wielding a two-handed Zweihander type of weapon is just ah, I don't know. It, it looks kind of crazy, but you know what you gonna do. Uh, all right, now we can talk about the Musafati Warrior. Now, obviously, Musafati Warriors also kind of a made-up unit. They're the they're not exactly a man at arms unit actually, but I put them here because they're like sort of like the equivalent to what Molly has as a man at arms. It is a melee sword wielding infantry unit, um, but instead of man at arms, th these guys actually counter man at arms. They're effectively the Malian version of a crosswoman, uh, and the armor designs that they have here is pretty made up. It looks like something coming out of Woman King. Uh, I kind of like this helmet uh, that they got that they get in the feudal age. This this reminds me of some of the helmets I, I see or the hat designs I see in um what's that movie that's really good uh children beasts of no nation if you guys haven't seen that movie it's about child soldiers it's got Idris Elba uh excellent movie it's kind of reminds me of some of the uh hat designs I see in that movie which is kind of cool the like metal banded arms are kind of whatever this like gladiator breastplate is a little bit ridiculous the leopard pelt straight out of fantasy this helmet design is also just like I, I don't know where they got the inspiration for that but the sword is actually called an Ada sword, which is a symbol of Benin uh, royalty. Um, so not really related to the Malians at all. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, I don't think it belongs with the rest of this. It's a little bit too made up. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the woman at arms category. Not the worst looking unit, but just a little bit too fantastical uh, for my tastes. All right, next up, we're looking at the Rus men at arms. Okay, now easily you just just looking at it you can immediately tell this is one of the best looking units in the game uh just the detailing the fur coat this fur vest like what that's so the drip is insane look at this oh my god the fur trim on this armor and the mirror armor we we actually have exactly i'm gonna bring it up on the screen here but we actually have exactly uh the the source material that we know that this armor is from this Rus mirror style armor looks amazing this helmet looks so good it's got this like ear protector thing here this the triangular shields iconic uh easily one of the best looking men at arms in the game i'm putting this in the awuga this this actually mm, does it beat out the french man? i'm gonna say it beats out the it beats out the french men at arms i'm gonna say it easily the most awuga men at arms that we've seen so far all right now we're looking at the mongols now Technically, the Mongols, uh, they're a little bit weird in the game. They actually have units that are both male and female. And in this case, in this picture, I think we actually have female uh, representatives of the men at arms. So these are technically women at arms. But I will not be putting them in the women at arms category because they also include men at arms here. And uh, they're they're you know they're armored in a very traditional way doesn't look too ridiculous uh the the shields look good I, i'm not sure now this is the all these images were taken from the wiki and i'm not sure if this actually 
um, if this actually reflects the Imperial Age design, because it still looks like it's got the silver motifs. It doesn't look any different from the Castle Age. The only difference is this shield that turns golden. It would be a damn shame if the Imperial version of the Mongol Men at Arms is just the same thing with a golden shield. Um, but even without that, just the design here, it's, it's bulky, it's, it's neat, but it's not, it doesn't stand out. It doesn't really stand out all that much. So I'm going to have to put this, this is in the mid category. This is in the mid category. It's, uh, it's a little bit less mid than the Samurai though. It's, 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 uh, it's above the Samurai. Samurai are definitely a bit more lower tier than the, uh, than the way the Mongol men or arms look. All right. Next up, we're looking at the Ottomans. Now, Ottoman men at arms, I'm not gonna lie to you, these guys look crazy, like crazy awesome. They got they got this like circle motif going on. I guess you can call this mirror armor as well. Uh, they got a circle here, I got a circle here, they got a circle up on this helmet. This helmet design's just ridiculous. Like it just covers up the face. The Imperial version of the Ottoman men at arms just like, what? is this tassel looking design here these shoulder pads it just looks insane when you build these guys in the game like they look so damn good especially from a distance uh this is easily one of the highest tier men at arms um i'm gonna put this in one of the beautiful beautiful people and honestly i think it beats out the delhi men at arms i think that 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 circular armor just looks way too good it beats out the delhi men at arms both very very good looking men at arms ottomans are just a little bit more badass like this thing just looks like I don't know, man. This looks like something out of a Warhammer game or something like that. Uh, all right. We're looking at HRE now. Now, out of all these factions, who's going to build the Man at Arms the most? Probably HRE. Now, HRE is a little bit distinct here because they can actually be upgraded in various ways. They can be upgraded with the mace. And if you get the mace upgrade first, uh, you got the same dude. He, instead of holding a sword, he's holding a mace. Or they can be upgraded with the two handed weapon upgrade first, and that gives them a two handed axe. And if you combine the up two upgrades together, you get a two handed mace. Now, this mace thing is comically big. Like, just what the heck is that? And I mean, even the this one-handed version of the mace is just ridiculously big. Maces were hardly bigger than the size of a closed fist in real life. Uh, but <laughs> this thing looks like a watermelon at the end of a big metal rod. Um, but, you know, it's iconic. It looks, when you see it in game, it's a little bit comical. But, you know, at least it stands out and you know you know what they're hitting you with. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, the design here, you know, the H2 design, eh, not really it. Not really it. It kind of looks a little bit ridiculous. But uh, once we get up into the Imperial design, you see this kind of, um, oh man, I don't know what you would call this kind of helmet design. This is like Maximilian style salé. Actually, this is like a salé, right? What would you call this then? Yeah, the fact that the the HRE men at arms also have a salé, and the way that the uh, English men at arms have a salé, that like that overlap is not very not very uh, distinct between the two. But the, the, what? Ah, fuck! What do you call this armor? Is this called a um? Ah, the name is escaping me. Oh my god! This is not a burgeonette. This is a uh. Oh, I forgot the name of it. Oh, well, well it's like a Maximilian style armor. The Imperial Age version of the Men at Arms looks good. Looks damn good. Uh, so even though it looks a little bit ridiculous with everything else, it's such an iconic unit and it does not look bad. And it's such a core defining part of the HRE roster. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this at the lower end of one of the beautiful people. Uh, I love the diversity in the way it, that it looks with the different weapons. And I love the way it looks in the Imperial Age. Good looking unit. All right, uh, let's look at the, oh, okay, we got a bonus unit here. This is kind of interesting. This is the English Wineguard Footman. Now, I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen this unit before because no one builds the Wineguard Palace. And the only place you can recruit this unit is from the Wineguard Palace. Um, it's uh, this unit plus the Wineguard uh, Ranger are the two unique units you get access to as the English. And this was all added in a patch from like a year ago, I think. Um, the Wineguard Footman, it's got a big ass shield it's got a lot of armor it's got this really long axe that it's wielding with one hand which doesn't make any sense uh this is an ugly ass unit this is an ugly unit this this does not belong into the game i'm just gonna say it right now it, it doesn't i don't know why it i think they literally took the english men at arms from the castle age and just gave it some different weapons it i don't get why this is in the game and the english like no one's gonna build it it fulfills the same role as the regular english men at arms i don't even know why it's in this game 
Uh, yeah, get it off my screen. It's actually worse looking than the regular English men at arms. All right, now, okay, we're gonna look at Jean's champion. Now, these guys, when you level up Jean to uh, level three, you can summon men at arms, and this is what you get. And it is an ugly ass unit. I think the axe that it wields is literally the uh, the Streltsy axe that the Streltsy used to uh, put their guns on uh, to stabilize their guns. And this is just some French looking shield. This armor just looks so, I don't know, just like so mid. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, not, not it, not it. Uh, this is, this unit is ugly as hell. Get it off my screen. Uh, honestly, it works. It, it works even less than the English men at arms units. Um, probably one of the ugliest men at arms units in the game. Uh, and our oh, we're on our last one, just like that. Oh, that was really fast. Uh, all right, this is the uh, the the uh, oh my god, what's this faction called? Order of the Dragon, the Gilded Men at Arms. Um, obviously, this looks exactly like the uh, HRE Men at Arms. Uh, we can compare them side by side. They look exactly the same, just a slightly different skin touch up with the uh, black armor and the gold trim. Um, does it look better than the HRE version? Uh, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Uh, the shield, I mean, you know, the, the trim and the colors look nice, but you know, the fact that it can't have these varied weapons it doesn't get quite the amount of points as the hre, HRE men at arms plus it looks so damn similar that you know it doesn't get points for for originality so i'm gonna place it i'm gonna place it it's one of the beautiful people it's not a bad looking unit but uh it's definitely on the low end definitely on the low end and i think with that we have taken it we have gone ahead and judged all of the different men at arms in the game um yeah, so Rus, by far the most Awuga men at arms in the game, followed by the French men at arms. Both of these units extremely sexy. Both of these units extremely underutilized because they're both with uh, very popularly uh, with sieves that are very popularly played as knight sieves. So you almost never build barracks with these uh, sieves if you can help it. Um, and uh, let's see, the lowest tier is yeah, definitely the English units could use some work, and this uh, the Jean d'Arc uh, champion guy just. Uh, what is what is going on here? What is this like orange sash thing? I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. That that unit is one ugly unit. Um, all right. Well, that's all from me. This is this has been a tier list, the first ever Chili Awards uh, given to the Roos Men at Arms. Here, uh, we will be doing a few more of these, going through all the other different uh, unit categories. If you guys are interested, and uh, yeah, thank you for listening. And let me know what you guys think about this tier list. Maybe you guys agree. Maybe you guys have uh, slightly differing opinions here. Uh, let me know. It's all a good bit of fun. Uh, that's all from me. Stay frosty out there. Stay chilly.